Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Black Enterprises Inside the Studio. Today, we're going inside the BET Plus film, Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy. The two-part film series tells the true life story of Lance, a successful Atlanta businessman renowned for his revolutionizing of the city's 911 system and for his womanizing ways. When Lance is found murdered inside of his home, allegations about who was behind the attack take center stage. Join me in welcoming the film's producer, media mogul, Mona Scott Young. Welcome, Mona, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for having me. Great, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm very honored to speak with you. You are you. a media mogul inspiration of mine um, for just how you've done it and how you continue to maintain a presence in our culture um, mm -hmm. and just kind of help push us forward in different ways. So thank, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Of course. So now tell us about your new film uh, coming to BET Plus. Love and Murder and a little Film series. Yes. 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 <laughs> now then, then, tell us about the premise of the film. So Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy is what it's called. Part one went up last week. Part two goes up tomorrow. And it is a passion thriller based on a true story that happened in Atlanta around the murder of a very prominent um, tech entrepreneur named Lance Herndon. And the story not only parallels like what he did in the business world, because he was really a pioneer um, when there was, you know, just the startups of tech and also the 911 emergency system. He kind of revolutionized um, that whole thing. But he was a notorious ladies man. He was a philanderer. He was a local celebrity, you know, all of the high profile parties. And then Lance was brutally murdered. So this kind of tells the story of both his, you know, entrepreneurial endeavors, but also his personal exploits that ended in his brutal murder. Wow. And what made you choose to want to tell his story um, mm -hmm. in a in a film series way? I would actually credit Larissa Bates over at BET Plus. You know, we had talked about doing a series of passion thrillers. And this was a story, and I think it's played out on some of the crime shows, that just checked a bunch of boxes, right? This guy was this man whose money made him sexy to a lot of women, and he was out there doing his thing. And I think when you look at the circumstances surrounding, you know, his life and his death, it just made for a compelling story. And the idea is that hopefully we're able to do more of these under this love and murder banner. But this was just a great first story to tell. Got it. So now with love and murder, you're hoping to tell more stories, tell more of our stories as it kind yes. of ties into. Yeah, like, you know, going to the headlines, you know, taking some of those um, elements from some of the stories that we've heard and infusing them into stories about love gone wrong. Right. And with it still being a, a, a film that you have to make entertaining, are you are you having to dramatize certain things, kind of maybe add a little zhuzh to it to make it trans uh, translate in film form? And how do you go about doing that in a way that still doesn't take away from right. the truth, that this is a true yeah, story? Yeah, because you want to stay true to certain elements of the story, because right now in this day of Google, everybody can just go and look up the elements, right? And I'm one of those people that do that. I love true crime stories, but I'm always going like, oh, okay, yeah, that looks like the person. Oh, I see where they took creative liberty and license. So there is a need to do some of that, right? Sometimes you're collapsing and creating composite characters of a lot of the people that were in their lives, but you just want to, you know, keep the story contained so that the audience watching can track it. So, you know, it's sometimes about that. What you try to do is capture the time period, right? You don't want to change those elements of it. So if you look at it, the style of clothing, you know, the, the environment, the music, that all speaks to that era. But then some of the dynamics of the story are just kind of told in a different way to, you know, better condense it. 
Um, but then there are other elements when you look up, like for instance, um, if you Google Lantern, then you'll see some of the folks that were involved in his life. And you'll see where we tried to kind of give you some of those key elements, the look, the accent, that kind of stuff. Yes. And so what do you think will be our takeaway after watching both parts? I mean, I think it's, you know, the outside of the fact that, you know, a man's life was, you know, lost, there are just some big elements to the way he lived, right? And the things that he did, it's like the real life, you know, um, ultimate bachelor who just, and, and he was married. That was the crazy part, right? But the way he strung these women along, it's just um, compelling to watch. And I think people will enjoy, you know, the, the period of it all and the nostalgia of it all. I think Tay does a tremendous job. He and Keisha Sharp have great chemistry together. I think they'll enjoy seeing some of their favorites from Unscripted populated throughout the cast. And the, those guys carry it and they do their thing, you know, and they hold their own, I should say, um, alongside Tay and, and some of the more established actors. Um, and I think seeing, you know, the city of Atlanta and seeing what it was like back then, you know, for folks who didn't live that time, I think there are a lot of entertaining and, and compelling elements. How did you go about selecting the cast and what was the dynamic like on set? That's the thing, you know, once Tay fell into place, because it was really about casting Lance, right? Who is a guy that's believable in this role, that can walk that line and um, be likable? Because that was the thing. He was incredibly charismatic, right? So for all of this stringing of women along, they still loved him and came back for more. So somebody who could do that and still be, you know, charismatic to the audience and, of course, Tay, once we, you know, heard that he might be interested and then he accepted the role, all of the other pieces fell into place. Then it was just kind of matching up, oh, this person um, has these certain qualities and attributes that the real person had. So it brings that level of authenticity to the story. And then for me, you know, I always love kind of continuing to create opportunities for the cast that I forged relationships with and stuff. And a lot of them are acting now, you know, Yandy and, and Carly, of course, was always acting. We've seen that April's doing her thing. Jock, of course, natural born actor, comedian. So wanting to find roles for them that fit. And yeah. that was just, you know, how it all came together. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting to see that the Tay and April are on this film together, mm -hmm. um, considering, you know, their relationship. So I, I found that very interesting. Yeah. And but the crazy part about it is if you didn't know, you wouldn't have known, right? right. They were consummate professionals and, and Tay is like in a zone when he's working. And so was April. There was no kind of like, oh, they're Kiki, they're in a relationship. It was just, these are the two actors. And oh yeah, that's right. They happen to be in a relationship. Even like seeing um, Jock and April, you know, connected and coupled it was like oh crap all right because right. they all were kind of in their roles and they did such a good job delivering on that that you almost forgot I love it I love it and yeah. tell us about your transition into filmmaking what's it been like um it's been great it's been fun you know I hate that it it you know, it's taking off at a time where there's this, the strike that's been happening. Hopefully we're seeing that come to an end. But, you know, I did um, over the course of the pandemic was really looking to see, okay, this is a time to kind of dig in and expand the horizons, right? What do I want to do next? And of course, uh, scripted was a natural progression. And um, we came out of that pandemic with the project that BET Plus um put up as well called um, B-Boy Blues. And that's a project that I did with Jesse Smollett. He did an amazing job directing that. And we actually um, had another project that were, was in the can and we're finishing up and hopefully have an opportunity to take out into the market that stars um, Jesse and Vivica Fox. So, you know, it's been an exciting time because it continues to, you know, allow me to grow, allow me to grow the company yes. and to, you know, span, expand. Yes. Yes. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all mm -hmm. about. And you've had a strong behind the scenes presence in hip hop culture, dating back to, you know, managing Missy Elliott, Busta Rhymes, yep. um, to launching one of the most watched reality television franchises that tie around hip hop culture. And, mm -hmm. you know, as we celebrate hip hop's 50th anniversary this year, 
How do you feel about your impact in the industry? It's It's been a blessed life. It's been an amazing journey. I am just lucky to have had the opportunity to have touched the lives and the music and the, you know, elements that I was blessed enough to do. I think back, you know, I keep saying that all of the Hip Hop 50 celebrations have been such a great time for not only reminiscing and the nostalgia of it all for me, but reconnecting with a bunch of folks, right? So there are some major milestones that we're experiencing just within my circle with Missy and the induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Busta getting his Lifetime Achievement Award, right? To think that 30-year career, this is the first time he's been um, honored and celebrated in that way. And I also took the opportunity this year to get back into management. And um, I'm working with a young artist by the name of Scarlett right now who is, you know, making her own noise out there. She's incredibly talented and authentic. And so I'm just like grateful for hip hop and the impact it's had on my life. Wow, thank you for making that tie in because we've been seeing mm -hmm. Busta kind of take Scarlett under his wing. And yep. now knowing that you're managing her and you're getting back, you're putting your hat back in the ring. Um, as yep. a teacher. Uh, so tell us about that. Like, is that something that you guys decided together, like kind of just seeing her potential as a, as a new rapper on the scene? Well, actually, you know, Scar's connection, at least to Busta and myself came through Swiss, right? So Swiss was working with Scar and then Swiss, you know, and Busta are brothers. So of course that brought her into Busta's world. And then Swiss and Busta actually are the ones who called me. And we're like, we've got this young woman, you know, she just is, and, and I don't know how much you know of her story, but she's yeah. been through a lot at her yes. very young age. And she's done such an amazing job of like pushing through and picking herself up. And they were like, we just need some help. We need some help to, you know, get her set up. And it's been everything from like truly momaging, right? Because her mom unfortunately passed away when she was 12 and she's been out there figuring it out. And so she's got this entire village, Mary J. Blige, and of course, AK, Alicia Keys, and you know, just my partners um, would salute the general, Treva Williams, who worked with me in television, but has her own music background, you know, has rolled up her sleeves and we've all kind of surrounded this young, incredible talent and yeah. have been just, helping shape her from the inside, the music, the outside, everything. It's It's been this incredible, incredible labor of love. Yes, yes, I, I I do know her story. I watched her interview on The Breakfast Club and you know my heart went out to her because she has been mm -hmm. through a lot. So the one thing you I got when watching it, I was like, oh gosh, I pray she gets, she's in the right hands. You know, because mm -hmm. you can tell she has a very yeah. big heart. She yeah. has big talent. Um, I just don't want her to, to don't want to see this girl get taken advantage of, you know? Absolutely. So I love to hear how you guys created this village to mm -hmm. surround her and cultivate this talent. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where you go. And, and she's, she's an incredible fighter, you know? So I, I just think that the world is rooting for her to win. Yes. Yes. Most I'm rooting for her. Um, <laughs> and so now what you mentioned in that, okay, so we we're, we're here talking about your, your new film. We know mm -hmm. you have your reality TV franchise. You're back in artist management. How are you balancing all of this? <laughs> A lot. You know, coming out of the pandemic, we all had to like learn new parts of ourselves and learn what our limitations are and our boundaries. And so, you know, now that everything is back up fully running, I did get an education in paying attention to myself, which is something that for years I had never done. I just went hard, 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 hard. So what that forced me to do was realize that there is a need for a balance, right? And I work from home a lot more than I did before. I'm on and off planes a lot less than I was before. I'm spending a lot more time, you know, with the family and like my mom is at home with me now. So really taking the time to spend with family while balancing everything else and paying more attention to myself and where I am every step of the way here. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, And now when it comes to your work in reality television, how do you feel about the responses you get, whether it be praise, spirited responses to just the franchise as a whole and as it relates to the community? How do you feel about that? I mean, I think that there's, you know, good and bad, there's praise and there's backlash, there are passionate reactions in 
almost anything that you do that is worth, you know, doing anything that elicits a response means that you're having an impact, right? So I take it all. It comes with the territory. I understand that people are entitled to their opinions. It's nothing that, you know, I go home and, and cry over because I realize that, you know, it's elicited a response and they're talking and they're thinking and they're reacting exactly. in a way that, you know, allows right. them to experience this content. Right. Because whether or not they agree with it or not, it's still representation. And it's still representation. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And I always say, if it gets you on Twitter and doing that, then, hey, it's good television. Okay. Whether, okay. however you feel about it or not. And speaking of that, are there new, I mean, you're doing a lot of scripted work, but is there anything new reality TV wise, scripted television wise that are in the works? I mean, I mentioned a couple of the scripted projects that we have in the pipeline. And right now we've been in a period of deep development and pitching and selling. So we do have some things that, you know, I'll keep my fingers crossed and not speak too soon, yeah, but yeah. hopefully there will be a couple of projects that hit the airwaves, you know, at the top of the year that we're going into production on. And for my last question, you've accomplished so much throughout your life and career, but are there any goals, projects, or dreams that you're still looking to bring to life? Mm, you know, some of them that I'd I'd like to kind of give, to keep to myself until I can realize them. But yeah, I mean, listen, every single day, there are things that I, you know, goals that I set for myself, things that I set my sights on, but, you know, those have changed over time but yes there are some things that i would like to see happen that i'll be able to talk about when they actually come to fruition they will they will fingers crossed they will they will yes yes so thank you so much mona